Hey everyone, this is Mark from Solar Games. Um, today I'm gonna spend a little time and talk to everybody about um, spotting fix. So one of the to this is one of the more like interesting topics. I remember starting out collecting and uh, buying a lot of older collections. Um, it's definitely one of the things I was most afraid of, um, especially if you're gonna spend like a couple hundred dollars or a couple thousand dollars, uh, God forbid, a couple tens of thousand dollars for one card. Um, you really wanna make sure you're getting like what you're expecting to get. Especially nowadays, a lot of people do like to purchase off of like eBay, you know, other platforms, Macari, TCG Player, um, you know, not in person. There's always a higher risk of getting like scammed over those platforms because pictures are usually just a terrible indicator of uh, what the actual cards are. So let's talk about um, fakes. Um, I think for me, um, let's start with the, 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 the tooling I use, right? So. Um, something I always carry with me whenever I go out to do these uh, card inspections is um, this, this pen is just for, for um, counterfeiting like money or whatever. Um, I use a pretty bright light, so you do want to have a light that's you know fairly bright um, to use. Uh, LED is usually good enough. Honestly, these really cheap ones, I think I got this one for free from my friend or something like that, are pretty good. Um, this is for you to do the light test. Now, the issue is usually when you're doing deal, deals, you're going to have uh, to do them outside in broad daylight, so you do want something that's a little bit like dark. Um, so that's why sometimes I carry my little carrying case and I kind of just open halfway like this so I can cover a lot of the light and then be able to uh, run the light test. Uh, these are jeweler's baubles. I really like, um, I think was one of the one of the guys I was buying cards from, he had one of these, which has uh, LED lights on them that you can kind of turn on, on right and left side. There's two magnifications. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, I used to just use this one, which uh, honestly I think I was given. It was given to me by one of the jewelers. That my my, my uh, I I, I kind of knew. Anyway, so um, both are fine. I would say this thing is on Amazon for like nine bucks. If you're serious about doing these kind of inspections, I would highly recommend getting one of these. Um, this is good for understanding like the pixelation, the patterns. Uh, there's a couple things you should look for. Honestly, the 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 pattern isn't the best uh, way to tell fakes because there's a lot of fakes that have high quality printers that I've found so far, right? Um, <clears throat> so let's kind of go through some cases of what's fake and what's not, right? So these are my tools and I'll show you how, the, how to use them. So, oh, that's right, another thing. I always carry with me a bunch of just like what I call like spotter cards, right? So um, I usually, you know, because I'm dealing mostly in older cards, so I carry my set of like different older cards you know, some revised, some uh, unlimited, um, but everything else from Urza to, you know, whatever. Usually I don't find a lot of uh, fakes in Urza. I have seen a lot of fakes in uh, Ice Age, but I think it's like some really weird batch from a long time ago. Anyway, so you should always have a set of like this um, that's available for you to say, hey, you know, if you're looking for like a, looking at a Urza's card, pull out one of your rares next to it and just kind of visually inspect it. You can, of course, go magnifying. Uh, and look really closely at it as well, right? Uh, so let's let's talk about the actual fakes here. So I've saved a couple fakes. Some of these are Pokemon. Uh, shoot, let's see if I just have some good examples. Okay, so okay, yep. Um, these lands are really funny. I don't know why somebody would fake these lands, but let's talk about these Ice Age fake lands. Um, this is one of the best fakes I've ever seen in my life. Um, and then there's of course some misprints and such. Uh, these are fakes, but I think if you look closely at these cards, you can kind of see, but I'll use these Pokemon cards to show you what fakes are and how to kind of tell as well. And then um, these are, yeah, these are pretty, these are pretty, pretty bad. So yeah, a bunch of these are basically fakes as well. So, okay, let's talk about them. So um, a lot of times the easiest way to spot a fake is just by comparing the fake to the real card, right? Um, so let's see, so let's do this. We'll talk about a couple fake techniques that you can kind of spot really quickly. The first one is the back, uh, the feel of the magic card. So this is hard to tell, but like, you know, sometimes you hold a magic card, you can kind of feel, it doesn't feel like a magic card. There's something different about the way it feels, the thickness, sometimes the smell is also different because of the, the, the different types of plastic or whatever they're using. But honestly, the reason why I say look at the back is because, so here's some Ice Age cards, right? Along with these lands, right? So look at the backs of these cards. Let me see if these show up nicely. Yeah, these show up nicely on the, 
on the on the camera. You see how they're kind of like a little bit uh, glossy because this is from that you know like um, kind of gloss. And these also these are also a little glossy, right? But you know people who probably know these already can tell the difference. But let's say I put them in here, I mix them up, right? Mix them up, okay? Now I kind of fan this out, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Can you tell me which ones are the fakes? It is, I will say it is a little harder to see on the camera for sure, but I can already tell you it's these two right here. So I pull them out, yeah. See how the two lands come out? These are real. Um, it's, here, let me see if I can put one in the middle and show you really up close a difference. Notice how like it doesn't gloss the same way, right? And that's usually a, a clear tell. Is this like, this just is, doesn't feel like a magic card. There's something kind of a little bit too, um, too smooth about this surface, okay? It's too shiny, if that makes sense. So that's usually a good indicator. The, the other one I use a lot of times, just visually, is you put these two set symbols next to each other, and you just kind of compare the two symbols. And usually, and this is harder, much harder to do with naked eye, but that's why you have one of these, you know, jeweler's baubles, and you're able to, let me see if I can actually focus that under the camera. Wow, this is a lot harder than I th think it was supposed to be. Let's go find it. It's like right here, I think. Yeah, if I pull up. Anyways, so I can't really show you on the camera. It's really hard to kind of show you. Um, but you can take a jeweler's bobble and look at the two set symbols and you should be able to see differences. Now, the other thing that's really easy is look at these set symbol, uh, mana symbols here. A lot of fakes, they're gonna be lower detail uh, on the mana symbols, right? So if you zoom in on them, they're gonna look really crappy versus like a real one. So that's why I always carry one of every color of your spotter cards. So you can say, hey, like right away, um, <clears throat> Let me see if I have a green. I don't have one in Ice Age. Okay, uh, let's see if I have an island here or something like that. Here we go, here's the island, right? Compare this island symbol to this one, from, from that's the real one to the fake one, and usually you can start seeing like a difference between them, and that's usually a good way to tell as well. Um, last one, lastly, I actually think this is probably the easiest, is just do the light test. So um, this is gonna be really hard to see. Yeah, it's impossible over this like natural light. But basically what you're looking for is you're looking for like a clear white through, see-through type of thing when you shine a light. And that's pretty much been true for all magic cards of all time. Um, the way that, the reason why that is is because Wizard uses a special core paper. These are the blue core papers uh, for their magic cards. And so when they use that blue core, the light shines through, and it's it's apparent enough where, for example, if you shine it this way, you're supposed to see this art on the front, kind of like in the back shown through. And if you shine it this way, oftentimes I can see the mana symbols, or not the mana symbol, but the Uberg logo or the magic like logo on this side, if it's dark enough room. These fakes, what they'll show through is they'll show different colors. Like I've seen red, I've seen yellow. Sometimes I don't see anything. And that usually just means that the way that they glued the paper together, the core is different. It's not the same as the magic core, right? So obviously through these ways is usually a good way to tell. Um, here's a really good example of a fake that's really well done. So this Sanguine Bond, um, I actually purchased four in a set from the same seller. What happened is, again, not even that expensive a card, so I don't know why they're faking these cards, but the four, two of them are fake. And it was really obvious because when you first look through them, honestly, this side is really well done. Let me see if I can get that to focus. See if you guys can tell that this is a fake card. I mean, the detail of this card is really well. The coloring, it's fine. I don't see any problems. Even these bubbles on the side, on the frame of the card are fine, right? But the back is the dead giveaway. I mean, here, I'll just show you. So this, this is a newer Magic card, so we'll, we'll compare with something a little bit more around the same age, right? So these are Zendikar Rising cards. Um, I'll put this one in the middle so it's obvious, but you see the difference between that shine? Okay, that's, I guess that's not very clear on the camera, but the, the clear part is, look at the black. If you can see the black, it's definitely way more shinier than the other cards. There's like a, a, a specific like, reflection on that card that's different from the other ones. And that's usually a dead giveaway with respect to, uh, to the fakes uh, versus the real ones. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so these two are the, the, are the fake Sanguine Bonds. They're way too shiny, and if you feel the back, it just doesn't feel like a normal Magic card. But otherwise, these are fine. Um, 
Oh, the other thing. So, you know, I was really curious. So these magic cards look really good, right? If you look at the set symbols, you can't tell the difference. Uh, pixelation or like they look at rosette pattern, it's all there, right? So uh, things that people do look at, I rarely do this because I don't think it works because of cards like this. If you look at the, the green, there should be like a red um, check mark, right? So four dots that are arranged in a way that looks like a check mark. It's all there. And it's pretty detailed. So if you if you actually go in there with a with a um, with a uh, a jeweler's bobble, you're gonna be able to see the rosette pattern, and it's present, and it's really well done. So um, to me, here, let me see if I can get that on the camera. Uh, it's really hard. Anyways, to me, that tells me that's not a good indicator of fake or real. However, this completely fails the light test. If you shine light through these, these are completely yellow with their core, okay? So that's how you can tell, right? And then this comes into another uh, good topic, and these are basically, um, these are misprints. So there's a difference between fakes and misprints, and here's what they look like. So if you look at like these two here, you'll notice the text is really different between the top and the bottom, right? You see how the bottom is really thick? It's almost like it's a bad printer or something like that. Um, I've, and if you look at the bottom here, you see how the text in the field is super crisp on the bottom, but the top is like really thick. This to me right away, I would think is a fake card. But if you actually just do all the other tests, you'll notice that this card is fine. It's just a misprint. Like this could be a bad printer. It could be one of the lower quality printers. This might be like difference between made in USA and made in Japan. Totally fine, right? The other part is that's really tricky is for a lot of the old school um, revised duels that I've, I've uh, purchased, um, there are definitely cases where you have like, um, you have, uh, let's see, nope. Uh, there are definitely cases where certain cars are more glossy than others um, or the coloring is off. So like UGS is a really easy one to tell, but sometimes like if you take uh, two of the UGSs, Sometimes you can tell almost the coloring is like different. Now, uh, let's see, it might be really hard to take without taking this out of the case to show you. Okay, but that might be really hard to see. Um, but how to tell revised duels, for example, if they're fake? Here's what I do, honestly. I just do the light test. Um, I look at this mana symbol here in here to make sure those look like detailed enough. Um, I look at the line. So a lot of times the fakes, especially the old school fakes, they suck at this line. So if you magnify this line, it's not going to be straight. It's very fuzzy because they're, again, it's, their printer quality is not high enough to go really detailed print. Now, the newer fakes I've seen, they are getting way better to the point where that line is also getting better. But the, the older fakes definitely suffer from that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I would do it. Um, what else? What else? Um, so on the Pokemon cards, so this is probably something you can also learn from as well. I mean, if you look at like the weakness here on the bottom and the symbols and such, you can probably tell like it's very fuzzy looking. Um, it's harder to tell without like an actual Pokemon card to show you, but uh, I think I've, I don't have any real ones here in this pile of uh, cards. This is This is most of my like fake cards that I use for comparison when I look at, uh, try to tell what are, what are the fakes. Anyways, um, it's actually fairly easy to tell. So for, if you're doing Pokemon cards, same thing, bring a real one, whatever you're buying, and just put next to it and you'll tell right away if it's a fake, right? Obviously these also don't pass the light test and the back is that dead giveaway. Like look how like the color just kind of blends together. The border and that almost has no difference in color. Right, and that's usually a dead get giveaway as well for what's fake. Okay, uh, lastly, a couple things about condition that a lot of people don't know about. Okay, so um, I think if you handle magic cards long enough, you probably know that uh, there are some imperfections with respect to like, for example, magic's back, right? But because the back has never changed since the first printing of magic, it is almost something that's sacred, meaning all the imperfections are kept through forever. Uh, what are some of the imperfections that you're gonna see every single time? So I'll use my little tool here. There's a dot right here. There's a white dot right on this corner. That's not a chip. That's not a uh, somebody markering a card or whatever. That is part of the imperfection of magic card. So you're always gonna have that dot that's over there, right? That's number one. Number two, on, on this deck master on the bottom, you're gonna see this kind of like a pen smudge or something that kind of draws through like a smoke right here. It's a check mark. That's also part of the card. So. 
you know, it, it, obviously if somebody says, hey, you know, if you look at a card, these are not problems, right? These are things that are on every single magic card, even from uh, Ice Age back then to like Zendikar Rising today. So let's look at Zendikar. You see this little white dot right here on the top part of the card. Let's do that. Let's get a focus on the card. You see that little white dot on the top right corner of the card? Right there. And then on the bottom here, Deck Master, you'll see, you'll see the, the, the little like wave here. Uh, there's like a little bit of a, a wave right there. So these are par all part of the imperfections of um, the original magic cards that are present. So when you're grading cards, when you're going out there looking at collections, these are not things to be concerned about. They're part of the cards themselves. Um, what else? What are other things I, st I look through? I think that's about it. Just, you know, always have your set of comparison cards. These are really hot, super helpful. Um, I, I only wish I had more legend cards to use. Obviously, I only have like a lot of Chronicles, but these aren't true legend cards. Um, I have real legend cards. I just use those now, nowadays instead. So if like I'm, I, I'm buying certain sets of like cards that I know are from legends, then I'll just bring my, you know, legends cards here. Um, oh, wear and tear. Here we go. This is, this is a really good one. So um, let's talk about proper wear and tear or, or versus fake wear and tear, right? Um, things to look for when you're talking about wear and tear is this is a very well loved, um, here, let me see if I can just take it out of the case. I really don't, it's, it's probably not a big deal, right? So this is a uh, unlimited cockatrice, right? And this is really well loved. So the front looks fine. This card is actually pretty nice on the front, but the back is, you know, you can tell it's kind of like a MP to like heavy played uh, condition, right? It's really got some wear and tear on the back. Um, this is what I would say is normal. So you see these like little lines here, these are when the card was just unsleeved, put on the pavement type of thing, shuffled in the deck, right? That's why you have all these little corner dings in the bottom. This is where people do the shuffling, especially if they do this kind of like a riffle shuffle type of thing. Um, so that's normal, right? What's not normal wear and tear is um, when you see some sort of like three lines across the back. And that's usually what, or, or, or like three fingerprints or round circles where it's really white. And that's what happens when people try to put, uh, uh, what's it called, um, personally induced wear and tear, where they take a card and they just rub it on the pavement, right? Or they rub the corner. So if there's like a really bad wear and tear just right here, then that's usually something going like this with the card, right? And why do they do that with fakes? Is because they want to make it look like aged. And if it looks aged, you're less likely to think it's a, it's a fake, right? Like a lot of times people think if something is too perfect, especially if it's an older card that's like 25, 30 years old, um, you're more likely to think it's a fake. That's true, but um, just because it has wear and tear doesn't also automatically make it a real card either. Um, I guess, you know, since this video is a little bit also about uh, how I grade collections, things to look for when you get cards. Um, if you are looking at uh, near mints, right, so cards are like really good looking, no wear and tear or very little on both sides, then what you want to start looking for is like things like the centering of the art and image, like the border, make sure the left and right is uh, somewhat equal. Uh, this is, you're going to have to just eyeball this and you're going to get better with it with over time, looking for things like that, right? The centering, um, that's going to be really useful as well. Um, another thing that a lot of newer uh, collectors miss is the difference between unlimited and revised. Um, two major differences, and there's like a, summer edition but we won't really talk about that because those sets are so rare that you're not really gonna care you're not gonna see them probably as often uh and there's a lot of online articles that show you how to tell the difference but basically the the, the big difference between revised and unlimited is that their frame is always going to look the same there's no dates on the bottom right so you're not going to find any dates on the bottom we'll have the illustrator on the bottom with whatever um the unlimited has this kind of embossing so you see this little line right here next to the white line around the card to emboss the kind of image, that's that's the unlimited. So it's right here, this this black line that goes around. That's how you can tell an unlimited card from revised. Revised cards do not have that line. The other big giveaway is that revised cards are um, definitely more faded colors than unlimited. So let me see if I can find a green card that's a revised. I don't think I have two cards. Uh, you know what, actually, I may have an unlimited bop and a revised bop I can show you. Yeah, here we go. Um, you know what? That's not limited. 
yeah, that, that one just has a little bit of an imperfection on there. Um, I don't think I have a good example here. Let's see if I have one of these duels, maybe. Yeah, the, all, all of my duels are revised. I unfortunately have not collected an unlimited one yet. But the revised duels, um, if you've ever seen an unlimited one versus revised next to each other, they're very different. I think Volcanic Island is probably the one that's most commonly used for comparing differences. Um, the Volcanic Island in revised is actually really, really faded. Um, the, if you look at the one in unlimited, I mean, this color is so deep blue and that like eruption is very like red. It's, it, it's, it just kind of pops out for you. A lot of people really like that part about unlimited and that's why unlimited in general, uh, you know, aside from the, the print run size and such commands a higher price is simply because it's also the other white border set, but the coloring is just so much better that a lot of, uh, you know, collectors favor that much more. Um, that's about it. So I hope this helps you with your buying. Um, if you have any questions about like, you know, how to tell spot fakes, those kind of things, you know, leave them in the comment below. I can kind of walk over, but I mean, in general, I know a lot of people really care about the rosette pattern. A lot of people really care about, uh, you know, that the three dots on the, on the green dot, the green dot test, etc. Honestly, if, by just using the light test and using like looking at the back, the, 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 the glossiness, um, I've been able to tell a lot of fakes and it's just been working out for me really well. I don't, I think, I'm sure those other techniques work, but given the fact that, you know, the Sanguine Bond is one example of fakes that uh, didn't pass those uh, rosette pattern tests, but does not pass the light test, uh, tells me that the light test is a much better test than the rosette pattern. And it's honestly just easier for most um, newer players, newer collectors to, uh, to use. So, yep. That's, uh, that's going to be it for today, and I hope that's helpful. This is Mark from Solar Games signing out. Thanks so much.